Hi, everyone. We are back. I hope everyone is still attentive <laughs> after the, the two speakers. Now, at this juncture, let's continue and move forward. Uh, may I call on again, Ms. Anjali Vika Bahes to introduce our next speaker, Ma'am Angie. Thanks again, Sir Dan. I hope you can hear me better this time. Yes, ma'am. We can hear yeah. you better this Yay. time. <laughs> All right. So to proceed, our next speaker is a seasoned development worker with a degree in BS Development Communication from the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, and a Master's of Development Administration from USEP. She has been involved in the human center design process led by John Hopkins Center for Communication Programs and USAID's Reach Health Project. And work closely, she also worked closely with the youth and their allies to create solutions that address their needs. Her current involvements are on the promotion of adolescent healthy behaviors, prevention of unintended teenage pregnancies and gender-based violence, especially in this time of COVID-19. Currently, she is the Social Behavior Change and Gender Officer for Mindanao of USAID's REACH Health Project, focusing on family planning, maternal and neonatal health innovations, and capacity building platforms. To speak about the topic, Maria Clara and the short shorts, the concept of consent and their safe spaces, that's all welcome. Our third speaker, Ms. Lucille Dagpin Galicia. Daghang salamat. <laughs> Maying hapon sa tanan. No? Um, isang mapagpalayang araw sa lahat. So, uh, thank you so much uh, for this privilege to be able to speak on this online forum and sharing the platform also with very uh, well-respected resource persons. And thank you, Yusef Gad, uh, Ma'am Rio, uh, Yusef Obrero Campus Students Council, teachers, students, and listeners. I'm very much honored to share my thoughts on this very interesting topic, uh, Maria Clara and the Short Shorts, the concept of consent and their safe spaces. And let me share my screen with you. Okay. So this is what I'm going to discuss um, for this afternoon. So very simple lang ang outline, ang, ang pag-uusapan natin about Maria Clara, the concept ng clothes of Filipinas. Ano bang nasa short shorts? Um, there should be no blurred lines when we talk about consent and safe spaces as negotiating differences and challenging oppression. And also um, knowing and acknowledging that vow can occur anytime, anywhere, and to anyone. And also, ending vow is ev everyone's business. Okay, for starters, can you um, please, uh, if you are using your phones, uh, smartphones, you can try to slido.com. Uh, uh, slido so type slido.com in your browser or, and Type the code 31688, but if you can't um, do this, you can also type your answers in the chat box dito sa Zoom. Okay, so what does short shorts mean to you? Okay, I'll stop my sharing and share my other screen. Sige, I'll give you um, about a minute to answer. Ano yung short shorts for you? Okay, I'm opening the poll. What does short shorts mean to you? Meron ba? 
si type nyo lang po yung slido.com. Pwede nyo rin pong i-scan ito, QR code. No? Sanay na tayo sa QR code, no? Uh, you can scan this QR code and it will uh, take you directly to to this um, poll, slido.com. But, oh yan, may lumalabas na. Thank you. Oh, it's empowering. It's of course a choice. Skimpy daw yung short shorts. Ayan. Okay, meron pa? Mag-timer nga ako. <laughs> Sige. It's, it's a piece of expression. Oh, it's a piece of clothing. Ano pa? It's a choice. Okay. Ayun, may lumalabas pa. It's liberating. Oh, liberated daw for some. It's an apparel. Oh, clothing apparel. Ayan, dumadami. Thank you. Comfortable. Ayan, dumadami. Aba, iba-iba yung mga sagot, no? Kasi the more people lumalabas, ah, ayun. So, ibig sabihin, the word comfortable, uh, mas maraming sumagot, kaya mas lumaki yung word. It's also a means of expression. Yun, lumalaki din yung uh, word na means of expression. So, two words stand out, comfortable and means of expression. Sige. Um, I-close muna natin yung poll na ito at I'm, I'm happy sa inyong mga sagot. Okay, so let's move on to the next question, actually. Next question, should Filipinas, oh, Filipinas wear short shorts? Kasi ang topic natin, di ba, Maria Clara and the short shorts. So, should Filipinas wear short shorts? Why? Oh, may why. Doon tayo mahirapan sa why. <laughs> Pero pwede rin naman, it could be yes or whatever uh, answer you'd like. The same lang na code, ha? Um, of course, if that is their choice. Uh, if, if they want, they have the liberty to do so. Ayan, choice, lumalabas yung choice. The lady's choice, it's their choice. Of course, why not? Ayan, yes. Ayan, lumalabas yung mga answers. If you're a strong woman, you don't need permission. Hmm, kung strong ka. It's a piece, it's just a piece of clothing. Ayan, it's also a choice. So, I think lumalabas dito maraming mga sagot, no? On, on choice. Kung i-word cloud natin ito, choice talaga lumalabas doon. Sige. So, Tingnan ko nga rin sa chat box, may dalawang lumabas. Oh, wala pala. Thank you sa mga nandito. Okay? So, daghang salamat. Uh, they, uh, liberty, choice. Filipina has the right to do so. Uh, meron din. If it's appropriate, sure. Yan, we'll also talk about ano ba yung proper. No? Kasama yan sa concept na pag-uusapan natin. Okay, sige, maraming salamat. Uh, I'm happy. I'm so happy with your uh, responses. All right. Let's go back. Uh, I will go back to the main screen. All right. Ah, yan. Alright, so, so maraming salamat sa mga sagot ninyo and um, you are the Filipinas of today. <laughs> so, yun yung mga sagot ninyo dito sa second question din. Why not? Uh, it's your choice. It's just a piece of clothing. Diba? At depende rin kung appropriate. So, eto, kilala nyo siya. So, sabi nyo nga kanina, okay lang naman. No? Uh, it's your choice. So, I guess kilala niyo siya. Kilala, kilala rin to ng mga anak ninyo, ng mga young kids. Siya si dang dang dang, dang si Dora. <laughs> no, so she's very adventurous looking. No, she can go anywhere she wants, no. Meron pa siyang map and a backpack. 
So, she's very adventurous. So, that's just Dora. So, this afternoon, since we're talking about um, yun, concept of Mar Clara, about the short shorts, if we can go back, it's all about the orange shorts, na, which Dora is also uh, wearing. So, sino ba si Maria Clara? Enter, Maria Clara. So, yan yung concept natin talaga ng Maria Clara. So, time travel muna tayo, no, a little bit, and zoom in sino si Maria Clara. So, I guess yung mga students these days um, aren't required to read, no, Limitang Here anymore. Actually, ako, I, we weren't, ano, required na rin uh, in my school before yung mga works of Jose, Jose Rizal. So, sino, uh, are you still familiar with Maria Clara? Sino ba siya? <laughs> so, I guess, papa, kahit pa paano, we have an idea of sino si Maria Clara. So, siya yung heroine ni Jose Rizal sa No Limitang Here, yung one of his famous writings. Um, sabi, uh, she was the ideal image, the epitome of virtue. O, diba? She's so demure and self-effacing. Parang, Okay lang ako. Yung pahipi lang yun ba? And she's endowed, yun ang kanyang uh, plus points, endowed with beauty, grace, and charm. She was promoted by Rizal as the ideal image of a Filipino woman who deserves to be placed on the pedestal of male honor. Ingon ni Wikipedia. Oh, pedestal of male honor. She was further described as an oriental decoration. Oh no. With downcast eyes and a pure soul. So, lalaging nakatingin sa baba, hindi makatingin ng diretsyo. So, do you notice anything, uh, something here? So, I believe back then, si Maria Clara, she was better seen than heard. So, mas makita ka lang, dyan ka lang sa tabi. Uh, sorry, hindi ko na-click. So, she was better seen than heard si Maria Clara. So, anyway, so let's go back to the present times. So, marami nang nangyari since then, no? 2020 na nga ngayon, eh. A lot of things have changed, but not quite. Now, let's take a look at itong mga modern Filipina heroines natin or yung concepts behind these images. So, sino to? Uh, in 2019, siya si Mary Joy Tabal. Siya yung pride of Barangay Guba, Cebu City, who first made history when she emerged as national champion of the Milo Marathon for six consecutive years. Uh, nag nagkaroon siya ng ikaanim na crowns. No? Yung sixth crown niya, um, it came as a bittersweet moment kasi yun yung uh, pagkamatay ng kanyang tatay. Yung, yung in the evening of that race na sinalihan niya. Uh, way back in 2016, siya yung nakaset ng Philippine record sa women's marathon. At hindi lang sa Pilipinas, she was also um, competing in other international events. And of course, she won. So, and then also recently, uh, kung, I, I guess lumalabas din to sa social media feed ninyo, siya si, of course, kilala niyo siya, Si Nadine Lustre na nag-cosplay as Josie Rizal sa Tekken. You know, it's an arcade game. Hindi pa ako nakalaro niyan. But I, I also play online games sometimes. So, um, but uh, so far, let's not get into the discourse about this game's character. No? But, um, and then also, sa ating Philippine cinema at saka comics din noong unang panahon, we have this popular Darna um, na character, no? Bidang bida si Darna. At maraming mga artista, sino ba yung mga, ayun, si Vilma Santos pa nga, oh, yung una. So, maraming nag-portray portray sa role ni Darna. But, tingnan natin, what do they wear in common? Skimpy. Oh, meron silang freedom of movement. Pwede silang manipa. <laughs> so, Ano ba? Do they look like a winner? Do they look cool or powerful? Or mukha ba silang bastusin? No? Bastusin ba sila? So, these tiny pieces of fabrics have their form or function. 
No? So for athletes, it affords them more freedom of movement. And so with my teenager, na anak, <laughs> she feels more comfortable wearing shorts at home. Siyempre, bahay lang naman din. And for cosplayers also, actually, they don all sorts of costumes. And they look okay. So, it's also for self-expression. No? Lumalabas din sa, sa poll natin kanina. Or their way to embody their favorite character. So, we even cheer whenever Darna transforms into Narda after swallowing yung big rock, ang laking bato. Bato! <laughs> Ding, ang bato. So, I... I see the resemblance of that big rock as a major obstacle, obstacle that Darna has to overcome to transform into someone very strong. Uh, she can dodge bullets and even fly. But, and still, our concepts of clothes are still influenced by our perceptions as these are also based on our culture and the prevailing norms. So, and I, as I showed this picture, itong mga pictures na to, ng mga babae. So, sa aking 10-year-old kid. And, tinanong siya, ano yung naisip mo na about this short shorts? Sabi niya nga ito eh. Clothes are just pieces of fabric. This may or may not define you. Diba? Ano na ba yung millennial pa ba yan? Zillennial? So, at 10 years old... Uh, Anong generation na sila ngayon? So, still, what's with short shorts? So, does it create discomfort? Kanino? So, who's discomfort? To the wearer or to the one who is saying it worn by another? Anong klaseng discomfort? What kind of discomfort? Ano ba? Masakit sa mata? Hindi bagay? O ano? Uh, yes, we Filipinos, uh, we have our concepts of hiya, like nakakahiya ang suot, or lugar, like matuto kang lumugar, or referring to your place in society, or ilagay mo naman sa lugar, or referring to the occasion or place. So we do have concepts of uh, what is proper based on current norms, and the principle of right action binding upon the members of a group serving to guide control or regulate proper and acceptable behavior. So, yung topic natin is violence against women and children. And we often hear the question, ano pala yung suot mo? What were you wearing? Lalo na nung nangyari yung, yan, yung violence, yung rape. So, this is a very troubling question when asked of rape victims after they are abused. So, actually, I was also asked the same when I shared my story of sexual harassment. So, I, I also have my own piece of experience. So, while the question puts responsibility on the victim and adds to the trauma of their experience, the ex uh, merong exhibit actually na pinapakita, um, it aims to dispel the myth na yung sexual assault is caused by a person who is looking provocative at saka are they asking for it? Yung magsuot ng skimpy clothes. So, this next slide, actually, napakita na rin ito ni um, Ma'am Lorna. Um, what she uh, showed earlier was the uh, exhibit in the University of Kansas. What she wore exhibit. In the Philippines, last year, meron ding similar exhibit. It's the exhibit on Don't Tell Me How to Dress. So, this features representations of the clothes na sinuot ng mga Filipinas. Uh, they're called Filipina survivors. Nung sila ay na sexually harassed or abused, it shows yung disturbing reality na possibly anyone can be a victim. O, oh, yung ito, oh, on the third picture, it's a toddler. No? Toddler's clothes na rape. So, there's a story about it. Actually, the links to this uh, sources are, are shown in my slide. So, rape is an act of violence and control. Yung perceived attractiveness of a victim has very little to do with it. So, itong exhibit na to, it, uh, it's an exhibition nung um, 11 Filipina survivors. Ano yung sinuot nila nung nangyari sa kanila yung harassment at saka pang-aabuso? So, yung 
yung clothes na to, pinapakita lang dito na it challenges yung destructive belief na kung ano yung sinusuot ng babae, yun yung dahilan kaya daw siya na-assault. But no, pinapakita yung exhibitors na sana ma-break natin yung stigma na to na yung sexual violence is never the victim's fault. And with each outfit, is the true and chilling story of its owner. O yun, uh, na-mention kanina yung sa catcalling, workplace harassment, sa school, child molestation, pati mga date rape. So, itong mga adults na to, uh, in all forms and every day, uh, nangyayari ito. And personally, I also have my own uh, stories, like uh, growing up, I never thought of myself as the girly type nor particularly attractive. Um, narinig ko na rin yung kulot salot, o di ba? Pero kulot now is the trend. So I was one of the boys, so to speak. So during elementary days, I was on my way to school at nakita ako ng male exhibitionist, no? Showing off his private parts sa isang uh, sagingan. So Siyempre, na-frozen na ako. Nanigas din ako for a few seconds, pero I managed to run. Nakatakbot ako. And in college, sakay ako sa jeep, meron isang lalaki na itinaas talaga. Um, sinadyang itinaas yung kanyang shorts at ipinakita yung kanyang dimly lit private parts. And then, I thought magkaka-stiff neck ako sa... Yun, ayaw kong tumingin eh. So, I thought magkaka-stiff neck ako. And then, eto pa, when I became came a young government worker so I was so full of ideals no? kakagraduate lang eh uh, with full of the para sa bayan at mantra but then I was not able to foresee that some influential men oh, they tried to impose their power over me and made, made sexual advances so most often overtly hindi nahiya no? may power sila eh so I cried buckets full of disbelief that those people that I have looked up to, they look down on me as a young girl for sexual exploitation. I felt so small and insignificant, degraded. So, I turned to educate myself. Ang dami kong binasa. So, I turned to educate myself so that I can understand what happened and since no one knows what to say to me or, or how to offer help, I remember Actually, it was my auntie. She said, my auntie ha, yun siya, nag-unsa day ka, unsa yung mag-isuot, nga naman naharas man ka. So, auntie ko yan ha. And I was shocked too with her question. So, that time, yung Anti-Sexual Harassment Act of 1995 was just five years old then. So, it was year 2000. So, sabi dito yun, clothes don't really matter in sex crimes. Wala yun sa damit. So, it's 2020 now. And at least now, we have this 18-day campaign on VAUSI. Sa UN, sa United Nations system, it's just 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. Pero sana, pwede gani itong gawin na daily struggle, no? Kasi it's a daily struggle in challenging these oppressive norms. And hopefully, and gradually, um, we are making some noise, getting our voices heard, our experiences brought to light. And there's also this Me Too movement and Iha Ako na nilaunch din uh, kanina ni uh, Ma'am Lorna. But it does not end here. There's still a long way to go and the short shorts issue is just the tip of the iceberg. Okay, so, eto pa, for participation, the same link po, ano yung, um, what is consent to you? Pwede po tayong mag, um, pumunta ulit sa, sa slido, ano ba nga ba yung uh, consent para sa inyo? Yeah, I'll share a little my other screen. Okay, so let me hear or let me see you type your answers. 
this time we're going to talk about consent. Ano ba yung consent? Consent for you. Pagpayag. The word yes. Sige, dagdagan pa natin. Giving authority over you. Authority. Sige. Ano pa? Equivocal assent. Wow, big word. Giving permission. Ano pa? Confirmation. Sige. Mandagdagan pa? What is consent? Ano yung consent para sa'yo? Agreement. Sige, I'll count to 10. Baka meron pang madagdag. Uy, lumalaki ang word na agreement. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, wala nang nadagdag. A mutual understanding. Yan, thank you. So, lumabas dito sa ating word cloud. Ay, lumaki rin ang mutual understanding. Dapat pareho kayong nagkakaintindihan and agreement. Yeah. Thank you very much for your, um, for your answers and sharing your thoughts on your view of what is consent. Okay, I'll go back to my main uh, presentation. Okay. So, yun yung mga concepts of consent. Yes, you are right, no? Okay. Ayan. Sabi pa sa UN, ito yung GIF ng UN. Uh, consent, dapat may multiple parties are agreeing with each other. May yes. It's also concept of human rights, respect. Ayan. So, that's consent. Ang sabi pa dito, uh, it's simply put na yung consent is permission for something to happen or an agreement to do something. So, kailangan ng respect and communication. Tapos, it's also important na yung mga kabataan natin, our children should also learn, learn about consent from an early age. So, it could lead to better relationships with family, friends, peers, and eventually romantic partners. So, actually, um, this is also related dun sa pinakita ni Ma'am Lorna na yung violence nga, it starts from the home, from childhood. Na, and the same also with consent na ang bata ituruan din while they are at a young age. Kasi later on, when they grow up, um, they will know the difference. So, an example of talking about consent with young children, for example, practice with the children, uh, with your child, ano yung pwedeng lang sabihin and anong pwedeng gawin kung nasa situation na they don't feel comfortable and another is encourage natin yung bata to speak up if something doesn't feel right parang it's something off ano bakit it's off doesn't feel right and another is encourage the child to ask for consent uh, hingin yung consent for example um, ask first kung pwede bang uh, pwede bang maghug ng someone like can I hug you? No? Can I hug you? And then also, teach your child to respect no messages. So, sinabing no, no means no. Hindi yun maybe or papakipot ka lang. Diba? So, consent uh, includes knowing and respecting a person's own boundaries as well as the boundaries of others. And understanding consent means that a person has the skills to leave a situation and that doesn't feel comfortable and respects when other people want to do the same. So, ang consent din, this also extends to online interactions at saka relationships. Actually, pag sabi pa nga, eh, uh, kasama sa um, parang ethics din in online meetings is pag-aalis ka, magpaalam ka raw. And yan, may asking for consent to leave. So, it also extends to sexting, no? sending, receiving, and sharing content online such as photos and videos. So, that's consent. 
sabi pa dito, there are no blurred lines daw pag consent. Hindi yung maybe. Sinabing no, maybe, papakipot lang. No. There are no blurred lines in consent. Uh, base din dito sa ginawang uh, First National Baseline Study on Violence Against Children in 2015, sinasabi pa dito na uh, there's one in every five children age uh, 13 to 17 years old nakarana sila ng sexual violence. Na 124 sa lahat ng respondents um, na experience yung forced consummated sex during childhood. So, rape yon. And then, ang perpetrators are often family members. At saka, more boys than girls reported experiencing sexual violence. Yung, hindi lang vows, hindi lang women, no? pati pala boys. And just last month, uh, October 1, 2020, yung Senate panel natin, uh, may in sila na proposed measures uh, in raising the age of sexual consent from 12 to 16 years old. Kasi currently, ang Pilipinas, ang current age of consent dito sa atin ay 12 years old. So, it's one of the lowest in the world. Uh, ang nanalo lang dito yung nigger, no? yung country of nigger, uh, with the lowest uh, 11 years old sa kanila yung uh, age of consent, uh, sexual consent. So, sabi ng mga senators natin na um, this could lead... Kung mababa daw kasi yung age of sexual consent, this leads to the exploitation of many Filipino boys and girls. And it also means na anyone who has sexual contact with a minor, um, not younger than 12 years old, parang currently has no liability under the law if the minor says the act was consensual. So, pag sinabi ng bata na below 12 years old na, I consent, pumayag ako. So, parang off the hook na sila. na para bang parang ew. <laughs> okay. So, here are still some infographics about age of consent na nakuha ko rin from Assort Edge. It's a media organization na uh, they specialize in contextual reporting and explanatory journalism. Ang sabi dito, um age of consent is the ano 'yon? Uh, ito yung time, illegal age na ang isang uh, bata or uh, adolescent at a certain age is incompetent to to consent to sexual activities. So, kung sino daw yung maka-violate ng law na ito, pwede silang ma-prosecute under a uh, statutory rape laws. So, kung erase yung age of consent to 16, um, only by, by that time na Uh, kung below pala the age of 16 at pag na-approve na yung law na raising the age to 16 as the age of consent, uh, posibleng uh, maka-file ng statutory rape. Ngayon, ano yung sexual consent? Uh, agreement to participate in a sexual activity. Pero kailangan pa itong ma-approve, di ba? O talagang pumayag o na-coerce lang. And then, how age of consent is determined? So, it varies sa uh, depende sa country to country. yung global average mean is 16. So, makita nyo nga dito sa, sa right, uh, on the right na infographic, um, yung yung Bahrain. Bahrain, they have the oldest age of consent at 21 years old. Thus, this is followed by South Korea. Ang Philippines, andito, sa baba, sa Asia ito ha, so it means tayo yung pinakababa na age of consent. And um, yung anak ko ngayon na 10 years old, I just couldn't bear uh, such thoughts na yun in, in 12 years old, pwede na yung age of consent. Parang hindi ko kayang isipin yan. Okay, more still about age of consent. So, let's be clear also na yung age of consent is different from age of marriage. Kasi maraming, di ba, iba-ibang culture, even in the Philippines. So, in some instances, may mga bata na as early as 9 years old, pwede na nga silang ipamarry off to other families, yung buya, di ba, yung buya, um, arranged marriages. So, matawag pa rin silang child marriages, pero yung mga laws, they vary on the age wherein sexual relations can begin. But we know that generally, yung mga girls who marry as children, uh, they still live a disadvantaged life. 
So, they will drop out of school. Madalas nahihiya. At dahil kailangan nila mag-alaga ng bata. And they have lesser chances to return to school at ipagpatuloy yung kanilang um, pag-aaral. Although, um, marami na rin namang ginagawa yung uh, DepEd na they really reach out uh, to those nag-drop out sa school. Pero sa ngayon, uh, with the pandemic, mas lalong naging mahirap yung ganyang mga setup. And uh, itong mga um, child marriages na to, they're more likely to have a pregnancy and birth-related complications. And also mortality, posibleng madali silang mamatay. Hindi pa kasi ready yung kanilang katawan. At saka yung uh, rapid repeat, uh, they're likely to give birth to more children than women who marry older. And um, abortion is still illegal in the Philippines. Tapos, ang mga minors natin, uh, ito pa yung uh, concept ng parental consent para maka-access sila sa contraceptives. So, kasama pa rin yun sa na-find out din namin sa, uh, with this project na ito ay isang somehow naging barrier yung parental consent. Na ang dami, tumataas talaga yung teenage pregnancies, pero itong mga kabataan, they couldn't access um, contraceptives uh, easily kasi kailangan din ng parental consent at nagkakaroon ng, kahi, ng hiya, ganyan, uh, nahirapan. So, we hope that the passing of this bill uh, increases the age of consent. Uh, it could also have an impact to the social emergency na na-report nga ng PAPCOM um, this year. Uh, sabi pa nga ng PAPCOM na, uh, sorry, sabi pa nga ng PAPCOM na about 40 to 50 girls between the ages of 10 to 14, they give birth every week. Ang dami niyan. Or about 2,600 young girls get pregnant every year. So, parang it's really a, a social emergency, ang teenage pregnancy. Alright. So, uh, more on um, consent. Uh, we have this uh, GIF also from UN. No, Maybe it's not consent. Ang pagpayag mo noon, yung past consent, is not consent now. So, yan. so, lawmakers and women organizations argue that raising the age of consent, um, sana makadagdag siya na bumaba yung teenage pregnancy natin. Kasi yung sexual activity with individuals below 16, uh, yun nga, matawag na siya as statutory rape. At pangalawa, uh, yung COVID-19 pandemic, um, and nasa bahay lang, school from home, uh, it made children more, more vulnerable to sexual abuse and exploitation kung ang kanilang exploiters and uh, perpetrators are, are with them. Um, sabi pa ng Salinlahi Alliance for Children's Concerns, they made, uh, they said this na yung isang 12-year-old na bata, um, it, uh, he or she cannot in any way properly discern abuse and consequently cannot adequately defend herself or himself from such. So, sana uh, magkaroon, magkaroon ng higher age of consent and therefore will help protect Filipino children from sexual predators na posibleng lalapit sa kanila, whether in person or online. And sana rin, um, we must continue to provide spaces for such conversations, mapag-uusapan natin yung mga bagay na ito, and share our perspectives para sa kanilang uh, future. Um, it will help young people broaden their horizons. Um, actually, lumabas in sa study namin na madalas kasi sa kabataan, they, uh, yung YOLO, they only live for the moment. Marami sa kanila hindi na naiisip yung ano yung future nila, what will happen next. So, sana we need, to uh, we need our children to develop this critical thinking and not just follow na don't have sex and you will be okay mindset. Kasi parang kulang yan. There's really a gap in that mindset. Alright. And what we can also do, FYI lang, for your information, na ang short shorts is not the problem. No, short shorts aren't the problem. At saka yung mga women, yung mga babae, they also deserve, we uh, deserve that freedom uh, that men have to choose what we want to wear uh, sans the consequences. So, instead of victim blaming or slut shaming, uh, we must address the problem directly by educating the men 
and women, o kasama yung auntie ko, in our lives about consent and safe space. So, we've been chasing kasi a band-aid solution na it has never worked before in the first place. So, parang band-aid lang. Pero hindi naman talaga yung solution pa. Um, there's also nothing wrong about attempting to help uh, women feel good about themselves. You know, uh, self-expression. It's also uh, kasi maganda pang legs or show off the way they dress um, by creating safer spaces for them to express themselves. Kasi women also deserve the freedom uh, and pwede silang maglakad sa mga streets na they feel safe uh, and ayun, as they grow up, they feel safe and don't suffer any more these consequences na sana naman ay na-avoid. But do mind na meron din namang mga places na may dress codes and codes of conduct. So, for example, uh, wearing shorts or wearing skimpy clothes on a beach is fine. Kasi nasa beach ka naman. Pero if you're at school, at nakasaad naman talaga, di ba dyan sa Yusef may nakasaad dyan sa gate, and yung uh, dress code, or at, at work, or pati sa church. No? It's, a, it's already a different story. Di ba? Yun na yung mga concept of what is proper. Kasi may pinag-agrihan na rin naman ano yung dress code. So, eto, dito na lang sa chat box natin sa, sa Zoom. Ano naman yung safe space to you? Ano yung concept nung, what is safe space? Actually, napag-usapan na rin naman natin uh, earlier. Ano nga ba yung safe space? Kasi when, ah, sorry, when we talk about consent, we, we were also talking about safe space. Sorry. nag na ko. Okay, I will... I will look in the chat box. Not saying no. <laughs> Yun pa yung nakita ko. So, what is safe space to you? Ano ba yung concept ng safe space? Outer space? <laughs> what is safe space po para sa inyo? Anybody home? Freedom from any forms of harm. Yes, thank you. When you feel safe and secure. Thank you. A space where you feel uncomfortable and secure. Uh, feel comfortable and secured. An environment that does not judge. An area where one has no fear of being themselves. Yes. And being able to express myself without any harm or danger. Yes, thank you very much uh, in yung um, mga sagot. Meron pa ba? Yan. Thank you very much sa inyong mga sagot. So, um, I guess you can still uh, key in your um, answers to my question. But I will move on to my next slide. Alright, thank you. So, yung safe space, ito, I also found this on the net. Itong uh, inverted uh, pink, fuchsia pink triangle at nasa loob ng isang green circle, yan daw ay, ay symbol ng um, safe space. So, yan, it's a definition no, by Miriam Webster. But uh, safe space, yung concepto ng safe space, it dates back to the late 20th century, uh, yung mga women's movement no, nagsimula ito. Pero, um, posible sa panahon ngayon, it has been used in many different contexts. So, sa historical and merong uh, tinatawag na historical and contemporary safe spaces, uh, may tinatawag na separatist safe spaces daw in women's, yung mga anti-racist at saka feminist communities. Meron din yung inclusive daw na safe space uh, such as in classrooms. So, ang gusto lang ding iparating dito is yung safe space, it should be understood na hindi siya static daw and a contextual notion between safe or unsafe. So, parang may binary. So, rather, through the relational work of cultivating them. And it should, uh, we should also note, according to Rosestone Collective, um, ito yung paper, safe space towards a reconceptualization. Yung safe space daw is never completely safe. Oh, kasi kahit may ganyan, 
um, we still encourage yung critical cultivation of safe space as a site for negotiating differences and challenging oppression. Kasi merong iba naman na, ah, safe space, hindi na ako pwedeng magsalita din ng aking dissent. No? So, it's continually a negotiated space. No? A safe space is also a negotiated space. So, yung understanding natin ng safe space, it, it is actually inherently paradoxical. So, yung cultivating them includes uh, foregrounding yung social differences and binaries between safe, what is unsafe, or inclusive, exclusive, at saka yung recognize natin yung there's a thin porous line between uh, these binaries. Um, and we also need to renegotiate yung binaries na Kasi it's necessarily incomplete kasi. Kasi ito nga, it's, um, it's never complete, completely safe and we have to uh, continually negotiate yung differences at saka challenging oppression. Otherwise, one group may tend to uh, overpower another. So, yun. Oppression na rin ang tawag doon. Now, we have this uh, attorney, uh, director, kanina discussed this, it, uh, attorney Villardo, yung Safe Spaces Act. So, sabi pa nga in, in an article that I read, um, safe spaces follow persons, so whether you are in a private or public space, a place, so you have a safe, inviolab inviolable space around your body that can only be entered with your consent online or offline. Um, but, I know you are all aware na actually, um, a top government advisor on regional gender and governance, uh, si Socorro Reyes pa, uh, during the 11th State of the Presidency Forum sa UP Diliman noong July, sabi niya na itong panahon nanda ito, uh, there's no other time that women have been subjected to shaming, humiliation, harassment, uh, with immunity and impunity by a sitting president than now. So, indeed, alam natin and we are aware <laughs> na he has made uh, many, di ko na mabilang, tingnan lang natin sa news, many controversial remarks about women which many groups find to be misogynistic or sexist. And recently, this week lang din, actually this morning ko nabasa, yung Commission on Human Rights also called out about these sex jokes as insulting to women and should instead focus on making the government's typhoon relief and recovery efforts more inclusive. So, it's wrong. Diba? So, sexual harassment indeed can occur anytime, anywhere, and to anyone. So, it's common as the cold. No? It's as common as the cold, sabi pa. Hopefully, hindi siya mag to COVID. And also, sexual harassment constrains women's freedom of movement, both in terms of status and place. Lack of freedom of movement in space causes lack of freedom of movement in status. Uh, sabi ng social philosophy today, uh, this is the, also the virus of this, uh, this crime. Uh, it comes in many forms like sexism, uh, power relations, psychological factors, moral and cultural values. Et, pero it also depends on each situation kasi each case is nevertheless a violation of human rights. At saka, pati nga yung language that we use, they can also perpetuate sexual harassment. Actually, I remember one student sabi niya na yung, yung word na chicks, uh, sabi niya, ginagamit niya ang word na chicks, o oh, chicks kaayo, oh pag maganda daw, good looking, no? Yung good looking lang na mga females. Uh, ang sabi ko sa kanya, na yung analogy kasi na mga chicks at saka cats, ito yung mga tiny, tiny little words na most often wrongly used, na it gets into the subconscious. Kasi di ba yung chicks? Chicks, they, young chickens, very helpless. So, they become the prey for the predator cats. No? Bihira, bihira lang naman siguro paglaruan ng cats and chicks kasi predator talaga so they become, the chicks become the prey for the predator cats to snack on and then there goes gender violence 
And then accor according also to the Philippine Council of Women, yung violence against women, it also serves as men's expression of control over women in order to preserve their power. So, ang Philippines, it's ra it ranks uh, eight, eight, ika eight worldwide in gender equality based on the 2018 Global Gender Gap. Uh, it also shows na yung traditional roles na in the Philippine society, uh, it, we still expect men to be the leaders and providers and women to be their nurturers and supporters. Pero for as long as these mindsets dominate, yung mga babae, women are seen as existing solely to serve men. Magsisilbi lang ba? So, this, um, with this mindset kasi, the Filipinas risk living in a society that allows men to view women as objects for their use, so objectifying women, rather than as autonomous human beings worthy of respect. So, in 2017, we have this NDHS, so yung National Demographic and Health Survey. Ayan, makikita nyo dito sa infographics yung um, several forms of violence against women and children. Uh, madalas na, uh, yun, spousal violence by husbands dahil na hubog sila, na sobraan og inum. So, back then in 2017, the numbers are already alarming. So, last year actually, uh, may data na obtain ang uh, PSA, ito, uh, if you can follow this um, uh, ano ba, news sa Business Mirror. And Business Mirror got their data also from our government agencies. The PSA obtained data from the PNP and the SWD and it shows this, this number of um, uh, cases of violence against women and children and JBV. So, uh, shortly increasing at saka mas lalo na ngayon nga nagkaroon na ng pandemic ito, mas tumaas talaga kasi in 2019 nasa 2,162 rape cases pagdating nung February 2020 naging um, 16,000 physical injury cases um, pero itong uh, nakasulat sa inquirer simula nung nag-lockdown, there's over 3,600 cases of violence against women reported. Uh, pero I think hindi pa ito complete din ang data. And kanina na din, uh, first of na pinakita ni Ma'am Lorna, yung sa Davao City lang na data, uh, it's also increasing. And even if alam natin na it's very possible na many are still unreported kasi hindi nga makalabas hindi maka-report. So, saan na ba tayo lulugar? So, where do we go from here? Um, sabi pa nga ng asawa ko. Uh, so, it starts from the home. Sino bang nagpapantalon sa atin? Sabi niya. Sino bang nagpapantalon sa atin? Sabi ko sa isip ko, nagsusuot din naman ako ng pantalon ah. I do wear pants and skirts and shorts too. And dresses, di ba? But um, we still have a long way to go. But we are getting there. Dahan-dahanin na natin. Um, we re-educate the men and women in our lives. So a woman's place can be anywhere. Women do go to many places during the day and even at night. So not just in sex work, but to work in night establishments, doing night shifts or any worthwhile work where she's needed. Uh, mga health workers natin, mga frontliners. Um, women work hard indeed. And hoping later that she can also break the glass ceiling, the proverbial glass ceiling. So in many places, women are rising up and demanding safety, respect, and inclusion in public spaces and coming together to make it happen. So actually, marami ng uh, organizations also around the world um, helping women to claim their space. So we can use our voices to advocate, to raise awareness among each other, uh, also with young girls, um, kung saan ba sila pwedeng pumunta, at saka how we can live without violence, discrimination, at saka uh, insult, no? without being insulted. So we encourage women, the ladies, the girls, to play a greater role also in decision-making and designing a gender-sensitive um, 
public policies. So, this also one part of the story. And I'd also like to share na uh, ito yung, uh, this is a very useful tool also, a reminder from the UN Women, na ending violence against women is everybody's business. So, sabihin na rin natin na GBV in general, it's everyone's business. And uh, UN Women offers us this uh, 10 ways where you can make a difference safely and impactfully. So, the first one is listen to and believe in survivors. Um, okay. Listen to and believe in survivors kasi when a woman shares her story of violence, it's her first step of breaking the cycle of abuse. Mahirap kaya na magsalita. No? Sabihin kung ano yung nangyari. So, we must believe in the survivor and give her the safe space that she needs to speak up and be heard. Pakinggan natin. So, wala kasi yun sa clothes, wala yun dahil siya ay nalasing or yung sexuality, they are irrelevant. Yung perpetrator is the sole reason for the assault and, it, and he or she must bear the responsibility alone. So, we should uh, continue to call out victim blaming and counter the idea na it's on the women. Na dahil kasalanan ng babae. At dapat sila daw ay mag-avoid sa situations that might be seen as dangerous by tra tra traditional standards. Um, this way, yung mga survivors are, of violence are speaking out more and than ever before and everyone has a role to play to ensure that they can have justice. Um, wag daw natin sabihin na, bakit hindi siya umalis? No? Bakit hindi siya umalis? But ang sabihin natin is, we hear you, we believe you, we stand with you. Narinig ka namin, niniwala kami sa'yo, and um, we stand with you. Next is, uh, we must teach the next ger generation and learn from them. Uh, the children of today. So, we must set them examples. And hopefully, it will also shape the way they think about gender, respect for human rights. And we start conversations, so usap tayo about gender roles early on. Ano ba yung mga roles? Um, kasi hindi, merong mga traditional gender roles and we are starting to challenge those traditional gender roles. Uh, ano ba yung characteristics assigned to men? Ang babae ganito lang, lalaki ganito rin. So we must point out these stereotypes na the children constantly encounter, whether in the media, on the street, in the school, and even at home. And um, let them know na it's okay to be different. So, sana ito yung culture of uh, acceptance and yung safe space na sinasabi natin. At saka, um, ayun, uh, we also talk about consent, yung uh, they have body autonomy. At saka, uh, teach them also accountability, both for children, for boys and girls. At saka, ito yung call for responses and services fit for purpose uh, para ito sa mga survivors. Um, sana mabigyan sila ng mga essential services. So, um, we will offer them, uh, kanina na, na flash din kung saan na yung mga hotlines na pwedeng tawagan, uh, where they can uh, get counseling and all the support for the survivors. Next is yung understand consent. Um, yes, you are right dun sa mga asagot nyo kanina na it should be freely given, may mutual understanding, at saka yung ito, enthusiastic consent. Hindi yung, hindi ka sure na consent kasi may parang may halong takot yun. So, it should be, um, yun, enthusiastic consent is mandatory daw every time. Hindi lang yung sabihin natin na um, uh, yung Phrases like, she was asking for it, hiningi niya yun eh, or kaya boys will be boys. Lalaki kasi, ganun na siya talaga kasi, Ay, hindi na natin mababago ang kanyang behavior. So, it's an attempt, no? it's a lame excuse to blur the lines around sexual consent or sexual harassment or misogynistic statement. It also placed the blame on victims or excusing yung perpetrators from the crimes that they have committed. So, again, um, in, in consent, there are no blurred lines. And number five, we also uh, should learn the signs of abuse and how you can help. So, marami kasing klase ng abuse. Uh, may mga physical at saka uh, serious emotional effects. 
So, kung concerned tayo about a friend na nakakaranas ng violence or they feel unsafe around someone, tingnan natin yung mga signs na ito and learn about the ways we can help them find safety and support. So, and if you think someone is abusing you, may, may help po na available, hindi po kayo nag-iisa. At kung kailangan nyo ng um, kausap, may mga trained advocates din at helplines. Um, yun nga, pwede kayong pumunta sa, yun, sa office po ni Ma'am Lorna, uh, sa GAD office din, ni office ni Ma'am uh, Ma Rio. And then also, number six is... Pagpatuloy po natin yung conversation or even start one. Itong uh, online forum na ito is one uh, and I'm very grateful for this opportunity kasi yung violence against women and girls, it's a human rights violation na it's been perpetuated for decades. It's pervasive. It's not inevitable unless we stay silent. So kung tahimik lang po tayo, magpapatuloy pa rin siya talaga. So, sana um, we will continue our uh, solidarity. Let's show our, um, we, are at, we are one with the survivors and we stand in the fight for women's rights. Uh, itong orange nga is a symbol. Um, sana nga you already um, updated your social profile media for the 18 days of activism here in the Philippines. So, maraming mga ano tayo dyan. So, sa Facebook, for example, meron din sa Viber. Nakita ko rin. And then also, we should stand against the rape culture. Kasi yung rape culture, it's a social environment na it allows sexual violence to be normalized or justified. At saka ito yung nagpapatuloy, no? the persistent gender inequalities and attitudes about gender and sexuality. So, it's yung pagsabi natin, pag name natin na, that's rape culture or that's uh, sexual harassment. So, it's a first step na i-dismantle natin yung uh, so-called rape culture. So, every day, kasi it's a daily struggle, hindi lang 18 days of um, activism. Um, every day, uh, we should have this opportunity to examine our own behaviors and beliefs and also our biases that uh, permit rape culture to continue. So, think about how we... Um, how we define, ano yung masculine, ano yung feminine, and let's check also ourselves, yung own biases natin, at saka yung mga stereotypes. Um, yun. So, next is, kung sakali may mga women's organization, let's also continue to help them. Um, they also need uh, funds to continue what, uh, what they are working on. Marami po tayong mga women's organization. Uh, actually, um, in Davao, we also have Talikala. Uh, ganyan. Uh, Bubay. And, and other organizations as well. And then, number nine, hold each other accountable kasi yung violence, uh, marami siyang klase and it can take many forms. Meron sa workplace, meron sa school, sa public spaces, yung, yung catcalling, ganyan, and appropriate sexual comments, yung hi chicks. Oh, so, siguro, depende rin yun sa babae kung if she feels um, uh, offended or if she feels, ano ba, feeling niya beautiful siya. Pero, if one feels offended, wrong na talaga yun. Diba? So, we should also create a safer environment for everyone. Now, we, we can also challenge our peers to reflect on their own behavior and speaking up when someone crosses the line. Like, oops, ano yan? And we can also enlist the help of others if you don't feel safe. And as always, uh, pakinggan po natin yung mga survivors natin at saka uh, tingnan natin ano kaya yung uh, kailangan nila na support. And also important na uh, kanina pa lang pinag-usapan natin yung mga data. Ilan ba sila? Uh, from the PSA to the local data. Uh, we should demand more of this data kasi it also helps us um, monitor and track and also helps um, us define our policies. So, we also need to understand the issue kasi. Hindi lang yung tingin sa langit at bana-bana. Um, at alam natin na yung gender-based violence talagang tumaas siya sa panahon ng COVID-19. At meron pang mga gaps uh, dito sa atong, itong gender-sensitive data collection. So, we must call on our government also and other partners as well. Tumutulong din po kami na mag-gather ng mga uh, data about this gender-based violence. 
So, um, for instance, kami rin sa Reach Health, we also launched this um, a digital campaign on familyligtas.ph. So, makita nyo po dito sa screen yung um, address sa Facebook. I-type nyo lang po yung familyligtas.ph. So, it's an online campaign. Uh, it seeks to build awareness on GBV and how one can seek help even during COVID-19. Um, kasi uh, alam natin sa panahon ngayon na uh, ang hirap talaga ng pinagdadaanan natin dahil sa pandemic. So, minsan, minsan, madalas ang minsan, um, normal din na nagagalit kasi nasa-stress or napagod, nalungkot or pinanghinaan ng loob. Pero, hindi normal kung nananakit ka na sa bahay nyo or sinasaktan ka dahil nagalit yung tatay ba or nanay or kasino man. Ang tawag pa rin dyan ay gender-based violence. So, kung sino man na nakaranas ng GBV or VAWC, um, dahil sa um, yun, sa panahon ngayon, dahil lockdown in Davao City, we're back to anong CQ na ba? <laughs> Quarantine, GCQ, MGCQ. So, mas madalas talaga nangyayari itong mga cases na ito within the home. So, let's protect each other, protectahan po ang bawat isa. Gawin pong family ligtas ang pamilya. So, meron tayo mga hotline numbers kung pwede, kung saan kayo pwede mag-report or makausap. So, um, it's at the tip uh, of your fingers and your phones. Um, pwede rin po kayong pumunta or kumontak sana sa PNP, DSWD, PAPCOM or sa Commission on Human Rights or sa pinakamalapit na VAUDES sa inyong lugar, uh, yung CHO, we have mentioned it earlier, yung GAD office. So, marami pong mga ways that we can um, reach out if, we, if this case has happened. And um, let's also share this to others. At um, by the way, sino po yung nakapanood pala nung movie na Aladdin? Mahilig din ako manood kasi ng movie. So, kung napanood nyo si Aladdin, nakita nyo rin ito si Princess Jasmine, yung sa kanyang song. And dun sa last part ng song, song niya, ito yung uh, lyrics ng kanta. So, yung kanta ni Princess Jasmine actually resonates about breaking age-old traditions and boundaries uh, imposed on her. So, at least sa panahon ngayon, yung Disney na mga female characters, medyo nag-improve naman. Uh, kesa yung the same old na uh, they lived happily ever after. At saka the, the lead character, they, uh, she was swept away by a man to the castle. Mga ganong mga kwento noon. Pero ngayon, um, nag-iiba nag na rin naman ang uh, lead characters. No? May personality na sila. So, tayo, women, let us breathe. Let us speak. So, magsalita po tayo. So, I told myself before na if I face a very difficult situation, sabi ko na sarili, basta may ginhawa pa ko, mupadayon ko. No? So, kung sakali, I may not win today. Be, pero napayugma, there are other days. So, let's talk, usap tayo. Or we can use this online platform so our voices can be heard. So, a woman... Conclusion na. So, a woman should not be defined by what she wears. Uh, she is so much more. A woman, tayo yun. It's a sum total of her body, beauty, intellect, ability, preferences, and choices. So, girls, ladies, women, we are the Filipinas of our time. So, be seen and heard. Hindi lang po si Maria Clara na she's better seen and not heard. This time, we should be seen and also heard. We are not mere decorations. Kasi babae ka, hindi babae ka lang. Breathe. Ginhawa. Let's breathe. Let's find our voices and take a stand against Bausi, GBV, and misogyny. And thank you all for listening. Uh, daghang salamat maing hapon sa tanan. Thank you very much, Ms. Galicia, for a very um, entertaining because madami masyadong infographics and your inputs really are very good. Uh, it started from uh, contextualizing how shorty shorts are being perceived by different people. Uh, one may say na 
uh, ew, dapat ang Pilipina hindi mag shorty short. And another depiction of a shorty short is that it is freedom, it is power depicted ng mga darna, depicted ng mga nanalo ng triathlon, ng mga women. So uh, the, the, the takeaway here really is that it is not the 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 victims that should be ostracized, but it should be the perpetrators of of violence uh, that should be ostracized and should be um, uh, dealt with. Now uh, we are a little bit running off out of time. Uh, for those who would like to ask questions, please post them. Sa, Facebook, if you are on Facebook, and comment and use the comment section for the Zoom, uh, Zoom platform. Without any further ado, may I call on again Miss uh, Angelique uh, Cabales, Cabajes, sorry, to introduce our uh, last speaker, ma'am.